what is the middle class? How does one qualify to be the middle class? How does one get into the middle class? What is it that will make it so? There's been a lot of talk online about the so-called middle class. If you were to poll a bunch of people, 68 to 72% of Americans would consider themselves middle class. How did we get here? What is this middle class thing? Because I'm going to give you some thoughts, some insights that I believe to be helpful in this quest from what is and what is not the middle class. I think we should start with what got me here. A friend of mine on Facebook posted, what makes a person middle class with no numbers? And this is one of the greatest Jedi mind tricks that has ever occurred. We're going to go way, way, way back. The rich class were kings. And you had to be born into royalty to be rich. There was no way for you to climb to becoming a king. You could possibly become a member of the king's court. That was the upper middle class. The king was the rich people. The court was the upper middle class. And below that, you had constables, judges, and that was the middle class. And everyone else was poor. This was based upon not how well you were educated. It was based upon how much money you had. And for some reason, and I don't know when this happened, but we have removed the requirement of income from the classification of being middle class. So essentially, if you go to college and you get a degree, and you graduate with a 3.6, 3.7, you're assumed to be middle class because you have a degree. Hmm. Question. How many people that you personally know who have a degree that is A, living at home with their parents, B, working a waitress or a server job, C, unemployed? How many people that you personally know that fit those slots? I actually very diplomatically answer it because the thing is, this is part of the Jedi mind trick that we're not going to talk about income. We're not going to talk about being the one of the most important benchmarks to class, which is income. It is hands down, so important. I'm going to give you a a stat here. And I'm going to give you two stats. 42% of all children born in the United States in the last few years were born out of wedlock, meaning that the mom was not married to the presumptive father. One of the earliest indicators of poverty at some point in your life is being born in a single parent family. But whoa, wait, because if we go and we look at these women, not as a monolithic group of women who are not married, who had kids, if we start to peel back the layers, we will find that many of these women have a college degree. Many of these women have history degrees, English degrees, they're really good to talk to. They're very sociable. They're, they're well-educated. They just don't have no money. So the presumptive assumption is they are middle class. Since they're middle class, they can look down upon the lower class. And this is where the game gets very, very insidious. We essentially, and someone... Uh, I'm going to read this comment because I thought it was on point. I'm not going to show who it is, but uh, someone that agrees with me 
let's get down in here because he made a very good point all right I'll, I'll, let's see well we'll start with this what is a good practical test to distinguish between lower and middle class i.e not a number a statistic etc you could say things like own a home or have a retirement account or whatever was thinking about this in the shower and my answer is not checking your bank account before purchases and payments and people level education middle class is usually college educated first right off the bat right and we'll get down to my response uh, regardless of what you need to be in it the middle class is small education is a hoax there are many people who have so-called middle class degree living a poor person's life to remove numbers money makes this much harder as um, people think of the middle class and really they're just a few steps away from poverty I would definitely agree with having kids before you're financially ready is a speedy train to the poorhouse and 42 percent of the kids born in America are born out of wedlock most of the country is poor in my opinion now people are just ignoring this and then we got Chris down here 80 percent of Americans live paycheck to paycheck none of them qualify I would say enough money in the bank to cover a year expenses is something that comes up moving money around like a shell game like Manafort the Clintons and Trump did is the American way but that's not freedom someone will probably label me as a socialist or call him Manafort out and this is the trickery that I speak of because once we've removed income anybody can be middle class anyone you could be living in your parents basement in a poor neighborhood but because you have education you could look down upon your parents who bought a house, have no debt, have retirement savings. Let me say this again. Because you're living in your parents' house, according to this Jedi mind trick, you can look down upon your parents who own a house outright, who didn't get any credit card debt, and who have money for retirement. Because they have the financial wherewithal to support you. How many of you know of people with degrees living at home with their parents, flexing in a nice car because they don't have any other financial responsibilities except that car payment and that student loan payment? This is the, the Jedi mind trick. This is one of the craziest things because no one wants to touch this because when, if you had to look at income and I, I've said this before, and I'm going to say it again. Single person income of 100K, no dependents, no kids, that makes you middle class. If you can make 100K by yourself, you're middle class. You want to be upper middle class? You need to be made 150, 170 as a single person, not household income. And why do I come up with this? At these income levels is when my life changed when I was at business environments and I did something stupid I, I paid cash for a car but I didn't have the money to pay taxes but because I was making over 100k a year I was able to weather that storm very easily so one of my benchmarks of being middle class is you can make Dra drastic financial states and bounce back just like that if you suffer a car catastrophe so your car is totaled so your car is down and you have an, an outrageous repair bill and that literally sets you back for a few months you ain't middle class you're not even close to middle class. I'm going to tell you, um, I had a $5,000 repair on my, M, uh, my X5M. So since I've had it, I've probably put 8K into repairs. 
and I'm not going to, well, I can't count the breaks because that was normal. That's a wear and tear item. So let's just say 6,000. That came out of cash flow. That did not come out of savings account. That just came out of what I made every month. That was, oh, my car is acting up. I need to take it to the dealership. I took it to my mechanic. He was like, this could be six to 10,000, depending on what we could do. Um, I took it to the dealership. Some of that stuff was a recall item that saved me like 8K because it was recall. And I got in my other car, which was paid off and drove that for a week while they fixed it. I am solidly rich that I can have an $8,000 well, six thousand dollar, well, yeah, six thousand in repairs in about six months, and not miss a beat, not complain, not whine on Facebook, and oh yeah, getting my other luxury car, which is paid off. If you can't do stuff, you ain't even close to middle class. I don't care if you have your PhD. Quick story with that. Um, when I was in the upscale garage sale, I had a lady; she had a PhD. She was very brilliant. But she didn't really know how to handle her money. She had got herself in a, a little financial trouble and she was trying to sell me some of her stuff. This woman, PhD, very smart. I probably made six, seven times what she made. Money matters when you're talking about class. Do not let anyone tell you any differently because um, I'm gonna give you another benchmark. If you did not work. I didn't work. I got sick. I didn't work for eight months. I didn't lose none. If you are out of work and if you don't have enough saved where you can live at least a year, you ain't middle class. This is one of the things that when you get into true middle class income, unless you are a person with some just some crazy spin habits, Money stacks up. It is nothing for a Google engineer making 200K or someone that works for Oracle 150, these young programmers that they'll have 80, 90, 200K in the checking account. It just stacked up. They didn't intentionally try to save it. They were just working so hard and they were making so much money. It just automatically stacked up. That's middle class. If you cannot have five thousand dollars in this emergency fund you ain't middle class one of the reasons that people like to take numbers out is numbers don't lie it's hard to shade you know well i only make forty two thousand dollars man that and you, you got a family and two kids and your wife don't work that's very hard to numerically classify as middle class but you go we're going to take money out. And I have a degree and I'm in grad school. I'm middle class. It is people want to be middle class so they can say they're middle class so they can feel better about themselves, even though they're living a poor person's life. It's just facts. And I, I've been noticing this over the years. And I've been noticing this when I can tell where a person is economically by their Facebook post. Because I, there's the usual suspects, and I've learned there ain't no point in arguing with people who are convinced otherwise. There ain't no point. They gonna think what they think. I can go ahead and just like be like Thor and throw my hammer of truth in the comment sections. You can research it and see that I'm telling you the truth. Does not matter because people love self delusion. People love it. It's the best thing ever. We like to delude ourselves and pretend that we're something we're not because it feels better than the pain of change, the pain of doing something. Now, what's going to happen with this next recession? Right now, we're in the pre-recession phase. People are going, it's good. You know, we're doing all this stuff, yet millions of people are behind on their car payment. More people than that are behind on their credit card payments. And, more than, and a lot of people are behind on their student loans. That's three very big problems in the economy. And people are like, oh, it's going well. It's going good. No, 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 no. It appears to be going well, 
because if people really dived into the numbers and every time I see this stat, it just cracks me up that over half of America could not come up with four to five hundred dollars cash for a small emergency within 30 days. But many of these same people who are in this position would consider themselves middle class. Now, let's go way back to the kings with the kings rich. You could not own land unless the king gave you some land. The king owned all the land. So the king was like, OK, well, I'm going to give you some you the Duke of Windsor. I'm going to give you some land. I'm going to give you some property. I'm going to give you some money. So the Duke of Windsor is now upper middle class, but he ain't the king because the king's got 90 percent of the wealth. The Duke of Windsor has 10 percent. Let's say the court has 10 percent. The king has 90 percent. The court has 10 percent. Then we'll go down to the judges, the constables, and they have like 2 percent. Then everyone else is a peasant. Does that sound very familiar? Well, let's go ahead and let me bring it to you like this. There's 2,600 billionaires in the world. They keep saying this like billionaires are being minted every day. No, they're not. You'll have people who are paper billionaires and they slide up and out depending upon the stock price like so quick. It's ridiculous. And then you, you've got, let's say, 20, multi -million, 20 millionaires. And let's parse that. Out of the 20 millionaires, these are people who include their home, their insurance policy, and their retirement fund, everything. They're paper millionaires. So that's about 15, 16 million of them, uh, of the millionaires. And they're like 1.2, 1.5, maybe 2.1 million, with a heavy percentage of that tied up in their home. Then we get to the other four or five million. These are the multiple millionaires. These are the people who have net worths of 3.5 on up to 50 million. And interesting, you know the number of households in the United States that have a net worth of 50 million? I think it's like 10,000. No, no, wait a minute. It was very small. It was something like I think it was like nine or 10,000 people. 2,600 2600 billionaires. And when you get to a net worth of 50 million or more, we're talking about maybe 10, not enough people to fill up a section of a stadium. It's very rarefied there. And you get to 100 million, that's, that's like 5,000 net worths of 100 million or more, 5,000 people on the planet and this is why income matters this is why income is very very important when you are talking about these conversations of what is and what isn't middle class that it's just it's very frustrating because i know the arc of going from being very poor i remember I had to sew my shoes up. Anyone remember those Nike Bruins, the canvas Nikes with the blue stripe, the black stripe? I finally got a pair and the size had busted out and I went home. I didn't even ask my mom for any more shoes. I, I got the sewing kit out and I sewed my shoes up because we were poor. That's how poor I was. So I know going to that and I thought, now the being in the military, that did change my class. But it still kept me because once again, when you talk about class, there there isn't there's actually like 12. I think it's nine classifications. There's poor, poor, which is what we were. There's middle poor and there's upper poor, which is right on the upper line of middle class. So these people with a household income of eighty five thousand bucks, they're the upper poor or they're just right. Yeah, they're the upper poor Then you got. Lower middle class, upper, you know, middle middle class, and upper middle class. Then you got rich, richer, and richest. <laughs> those, those are the classifications. And we have people who slide in and out of these classifications. It's very interesting. It, it, it is amazing because we and like the thing is, I look at the numbers because the numbers don't lie, and. 
it's very interesting because let's take the person who posted the um, the question. He's a gambler. And I remember on his page, he was advertising for folks to buy in. He was selling his stake. So if you know you invest 200 bucks, if I win, you'll get four or 500 back. And I'm sitting there like, now I, I did some research and this is a common practice, but there was something else too. It's just many of the posts he put, he's doing well, but he's not rich. He would be, I would assume him to be middle class. And, you know, he, he has a degree, he has a business, but there, there's just some things that are just not copacetic with a lot of his posts. But if you want to be middle class, you need to look at the money. And if you and your husband and you have 2.5 kids and a furry dog named Cheeto only made 95K in a moderate priced area, you're not middle class. If you have student loan debt, you have two or three car payments, and you have credit card debt, you are not middle class. You're one of those people that's drunk on credit, and through the extension of credit, you've extended your income. Because if you're truly middle class, paying for a car would not be a problem. Paying cash for a car. Or at least just having a car note for a year. Like, say, you're, you make 125 you want to drive a Benz. The Benz is 76. You put 35,000 down. And then you pay 3,000 a month on it. Within a year, that's 36. That's 72. You making 125, 3,000 a month should not be a burden if you um, have your five checking accounts, which most people don't. It's very interesting because I, I see these things and, I, and I'm just like, why do you want to take income out? What is this preoccupation with getting rid of income? I believe, like me, I don't have a college degree. I went to school. I dropped out my junior year. So based upon the lack of income, I would not be considered middle class. Because I don't have a degree. So what if I make you know, almost six figures a month. I'm not middle class because I don't have a degree. You see how that works? How many of you have seen this? And this used to be really, really big about night, late 90s when online dating was coming. There were many women that would post that if you don't have a degree, they wouldn't date you. It didn't matter if you had a job or not. If you didn't have a degree, they would not date you. So me, without having a degree, even though I make almost six figures a month, I would have been undateable because I was not middle class. This is the psychology of many people today that you and your, you have a degree, your boo have a degree, but y'all living with your parents. Looking down, at, looking down your nose at people like me who has lived on his own for many years. <laughs> it is crazy, man. It is it is it's almost pathological. Let's see what's going on. Jay Preston, what's up? What's up, Tiger Sharks? What's up, Crep Junkie? Each sense, yep, the middle class is the fake class. Either you have wealth or capital or you be in poverty. Pretty much, pretty much. What's up, Cashmatic, TMA, Chris Monroe, Black Zeus, uh, Donis. Well, saw an article that said 100K in California's poverty level wages. It is. It really is. When to rent a two bedroom is 2,500 to 4,000. 2500 that's $30,000 of your money. Minus another 30 some in taxes. Pretty much. Tim made the 19 free courses, made me money. Yeah, it, it would. But see, once again, people don't want 
to work. Target Sharks, this is like the Jedi mind trick that those actors is paid to get their kids in Harvard. I love watching that implode. Target Shark, that that's not going to stop happening. This one, all right, it, I thought it was funny because they, they supposedly charged 30 people and all this other stuff. You know how many rich people, this rich people have been doing that since there's been money. This is the way. Remember that movie, um, college, Rodney Dangerfield? He was a millionaire that went to college. And he was explaining how the real world worked and nobody wanted to hear it. This, you know, I, I have not even commented on my Facebook page about that because to me that was a non-starter. Rich people having advantages of, that poor people don't have? Heavens to Murgatroyd. Get out. Really? Oh my God, who would have thunk it? <laughs> Man, that, that is the tip of the iceberg. Let me, let me tell you something what rich people do. How many of you have been to Dubai and they have this Islamic law over there? Like if you don't pay your car note, they're going to put you in jail. Well, the billionaires over there, they know the law. You know what they do when they go out and do their decadent stuff? They go on their yacht and they go five or six miles offshore, which puts them into international water where most laws don't apply. Like murder, that still implies internationally, but a lot of stuff just international waters. Or they'll go to a country and be in the water of that country on their yacht and do whatever they want. Smoke weed, um, have sex with underage girls, and there's no law applies. But the thing is, you got to have a yacht first. Same thing with jets. Depending on what airspace you're in, you fall under the jurisdiction of that airspace. This, this is why you hear all these things. So it's just wow. What's up, Jasmine? Every time you say scam stuff, it makes me laugh. Yeah, they don't. It's like, look, you know, I don't care if anybody else gets scammed, but if I make money, I'm cool with this. Those people, squires. Oh man, what's up, Valerie Lamb? Each sense, I feel people don't care much about being middle class, but more so professional, and not care about capital income. I would, I want to absolutely agree with you. Remember the quote by Napoleon? I started winning battles when I found that men would die for medals. Professional title is just a medal. When I was in the military, we used to have this term called acting jack, which is you got sergeant stripes, E5, but you didn't get the pay. You got the responsibility, but you didn't get the pay. Professional. I am the professional VP of paperclips. What's up, DJ? as then the economics and the economics that I, I'm, I'm gonna drop some stuff on you in a minute pretty much crep junkie i know a lot of people home and mom yeah but they're middle class those jedis ninja no income no job or assets wow I like that. Henry James coming with some gospel. One economic slip, even a minor one, can destabilize most American households. Can I get a hallelujah? I used to live that life. I told y'all the story how I ran out of gas because I had a car where the gas gauge did not work correctly. And I guessed it made it wrong. And I ran out of gas. Thank, thankfully to a good Samaritan who... Picked me and my daughter up, got bought me gas, bought me a gas can. And I remember what he said. He said, a man with a kid can't be bad. If that had been me, I would have been walking to that gas station. I've been that dude like, excuse me, can we get five bucks? <laughs> I've been that dude, you know. Now, Henry James, that is pivotal. If you have one 
economic event that destabilizes your household for a few months, you're not middle class. What's up, Silver New Jack? Money Jones, one of my tour cars just broke down, and I'm walking Napa and I listen to this live. Thanks. <laughs> I have other cars paid, still not middle class, though. Well, once again, when you have the right information, you make better decisions. So instead of living under this cloud of delusion, you'll make proper decisions because there are so many people who pretend to be middle class, but when it comes to showing receipts for being middle class, they have none. Anthony Johnson, people whine on the internet really tripped me out. Like, go figure it out. You really sat there and typed out that whole problem. Uh, Anthony Johnson, there are many people who have absolutely no problem solving skills. None. I know, man. I love that quote. Women lie, men lie, numbers don't lie. <laughs> What's up, Christina Stewart? Oh, dang, Adonis. Erica Williams, 37 million, million credit cards, 90 days late. 7 million cards, 90 days late. That's a problem. Because those folks have already crossed the, the boundary of being late. How many people are on the precipice just teetering on that edge? They just like, oops. No, I almost fell over. No, no, I round the edge. And if it's just that more than my PayPal account. So to the chase, where does this dialogue go? If majority is not there. Yeah. Now we're going to talk about how you can get there. I know the Bitcoin millionaires. A lot of that Bitcoin talks just stopped. It was crazy. I've done is the folks study money supply like M0, M1. You will see the game of musical chairs where they calculate the circulation of money. You can see where why few achieve independence of wealth. We're going to talk about that. Uh, Gabran, why does the education system refuse to teach us to become rich? Who funds the education system? The people who fund the education system have no desire to liberate and create free thinkers. That'd just be a problem. The education system is designed to create people to be drones. Oh, Erica, when people talk about gold diggers, they only make 45K a year, brother style. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, upper poor 80, like you live in London. Okay, Crep Junkie TV. How many of these rich guys have BMWs, Rolls Royces on the curb because London property is so expensive that it's impractical to buy a place with a garage? I got pictures of that when I was over there. It was blowing me away. Uh, Henry Jane's income reveals the truth. Absolutely. That's right, Anthony Johnson is to make you a worker drone. Adonis, by far, if you're single with no kids, you are financially turbocharged. As kids alone are expensive, like a Lamborghini, each expensive over 8 to 20 years. That's not compounded. Uh, once again, and I've talked about this, don't have kids before you're economically ready. That is the quickest way to the poorhouse. Even if you're married, it still is. You ever notice how... You get these kids and their parents, <clears throat> well, once it takes a lot of energy to raise kids, a lot of time, a lot of face time. So it's pretty hard to raise kids and become rich. It's very, very hard. What's up, brother man trucking, Ebony Empire? Thomas Dickens, never going to stop. They're just going to go further underground with this college thing. Pretty much. Chris Monroe, you write about that dating thing. I had to ask a girl, are you saying that we cannot date because I dropped out of college to make more money? Dude, 
That was, I mean, people had that in their profile. <laughs> Money Jones is a price tag to everything. Dude, like the whole education scandal, that is a distraction. That is not news. That's how wealthy people have been getting down since the United States of America has been the United States of America. <clears throat> I, I, I just thought it was funny. It's like, oh, and people are like, oh, God, yeah, they're, they're taking uh, unfair advantage. Yeah, they're scamming. It. Oh, God, you know, they're such bad. I'm like, if you knew what really went down. I know, Henry James, it, it does. Let's see. Oh, Erica, look, look like that. Uh, that Thanksgiving song. Look, I know three colleges in North Carolina. You drop fifty thousand dollars and get reviewed by a board. You get an honorary degree. Mm, 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 mm. What's up, Shadow the Musicians? It's a fifty thousand dollar donation. Man, uh, Quentin Jackson, the money that the economy is losing, where is it going? Good question. And you will, as someone that mentioned earlier, you will have to see how money is created. Quantitative easing. Quantitative easing is when they print up more money because <clears throat> there's more money in circulations. People go to the bank, they get loans, the banks could do fractional lending. So this creates a lot of money in the economy. But as things starts to fall off, the money supply drops. So essentially, it, without quantitative easing, we would not have as much money in circulation as we do. So that's what's going on. So essentially, the money that's disappearing, which should have never been there to begin with, it's just going back to what it really should be. What's up, Leslie? I'm telling y'all, I'm going to be really working hard on getting on the YouTube notification list, man. YouTube's a hater. They're just not going to send you a notification. Between the tax man, scarier than the candy man. KP Bitcoin has stabilized but not growing. Mm. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. All right. Let, let's have a little crypto conversation. Because I, I really have got too much to do to be talking about it. But last in December 2017, what did I tell you crypto was going to do? I said it was going to drop. And if you had dollar cost average, which means regardless of what it does, you put 300 bucks a month into crypto, you would have lost your money. You would be down if you had dollar cost average from January 2018 to December 2018. Now, one of the things that cracks me up is you still have these people making these predictions because they have heavy interest in Bitcoin. We looked at a whole year where it just went down, 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 down. And it's like Bitcoin to the moon. Oh, it's going to be twenty five hundred. Uh, I revised my price prediction. You know, instead of fifty thousand, it'll be twenty five thousand and on and on and on. Yet, if you look with your lying eyes, <laughs> you will see that it's going down, 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 down. I don't think Bitcoin's going to go to zero, but I, because one of my predictions was it was going to hit 1500 to 2000 the first quarter of this year. Uh, due to manipulation, it doesn't look like that's going to happen, but I guarantee you it will drop. It will go down further. I guarantee it. Mindsets with Mark Scott. Thank you for the intelligent insights into the real financial game. Thank you, my dude. Valerie Lamp, what's the salary for upper class status? 200 250k and i'm going to say this because at 200k your life just changes man i mean you just don't have normal people problems like if like my car all right let's say i was someone that was flexing and i had both those cars and i had car payments on both that bmw wouldn't be fixed because i still had those car payments i was just flexing See, this is what you're going to see during the real recession. We're in the pre-recession. You're going to see a lot of people who are flexing real hard. They're just going to disappear. You just One day, you're just going to stop seeing them posting because it is hard 
to keep the fake oration going on, the trick oration. But at two, all right, let me go ahead and give you where I was. The first time that I felt economically free, I was at about 165 per year. And I didn't consider myself like balling. It was just, I could drive a decent car. I could live in a decent neighborhood. If I wanted to go on a date, I didn't have to check my bank account. But I really wasn't balling. See, 150 to 200K gives you the cap. Oh, I got something. Uh, this guy, uh, the, I, I don't know if I saved it on his computer. This guy who was doing Amazon FBA. And this is very, very important. This is going to tie into what I was just about to say. Capital. The 150 to 200K gave me the capital, the financial wherewithal to start a business without having to do loans. I mean, I just saved money. There was a guy, he was an Amazon seller. He's had his Amazon business for seven years. And he does 18 million a year and he brings home about 4 million, right? But it's uh, Erica, actually Erica had posted that. She actually mentioned me. And when you look at the details, before Dude bought his first product, he went out and raised money. He asked for the money. He had $60,000. He took $10,000 to get an office. So his Amazon FBA business was never in a house. 97% of the people I know who do Amazon FBA, do, they, they still do it out their house. They haven't moved up to a warehouse. And due to infrastructure and capacity, if you are in your house, you're losing money because you don't have enough room to really grow fast. So $10,000 onto the, the warehouse and the office, then $50,000 in the product. So seven years ago, he started his Amazon FBA with $60,000. So to my point, you making 150, 200 K, you can save up $60,000 very quickly, very, very quickly. What bad things would happen? Oh, you didn't have to worry about it. It's never going to happen. All right. Half this country voted for Trump. It ain't going to never happen. Eric. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, because the whole gold digging conversation. I mean, the average man does not have any gold to dig. The average man is poor or close to poor. Valor, really? You did a G. You're wealthy and have children, correct? A great. Oh, no, 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 no. Let, let's talk about that. Whoa, whoa. Let's go back. Come back, Valerie. Um, this is how I, when I had kids, my kids were about nine. I was divorced. I was living on my own. And I had to pay child support and I was getting my kids every other weekend. So, no. Uh, essentially, I was in this situation where I had a lot of free time. If I had stayed married and we worked together, I would not be in the position that I'm in today. Let that marinate in. Understand, the reason that I'm in the position I went in today is I went through hell and high water. First of all, Let's say this is normal, right? Normal income, you're living your life. All right, this is normal. I was here. I was below normal. I did not, I, for years, I was below normal. And I had to fight to get to normal. And because I was fighting so hard, I got past normal. No, that, that did not happen. Crep junkie facts. I know someone leasing a 2018 Merc GLC at 800 a month and can't afford to rent a room at the moment because his credit got jacked up when he got a pay cut. He look he driving middle class, but he ain't middle class. And God forbid if that car needs work. Because this is one of the things. Because I was going to do a video on luxury cars. If you own a luxury car like my Audi's, it's uh, 14 years old. It's very temperamental. You're going to have some heavy-duty car service bills. Just normal maintenance. I mean, just the tires on the X5, that's 2K. The brakes, uh, 1600 Rear, 
2000 front. The brakes. That's just normal maintenance. BP Trucking, thank you for the $15 super chat. Appreciate you. <laughs> Christina Stewart's funny. Just smells so good. I like that name, man. I really do. Erica Williams, the reason women put that because you are whatever your husband is. If he's a trucker, even a wealthy trucker, you're a trucker's wife. If he's a doctor, engineer, an engineer, you're, you're, you're upper class. I'm kind of with that. Remember when I talked about the trucker who owned his own trucker? He had like five trucks and his wife who was like five foot nothing. It was just amazing to see this little tiny woman jump out of this big truck. Um, he was he was rich. He wasn't middle class. He was a trucker. I get the nomenclature because it sounds better that I'm a doctor's wife, I'm an engineer's wife versus I'm a trucker's wife. Uh, there's a dude here on YouTube, Ghost, still hogging TV. Dude, rich. <laughs> He's rich. But I, I, I will say I understand where you're coming from because when I did some testing on Bumble, when I put that I was an engineer, most matches ever mechanical engineer so I, I i feel you what's up alice brick and mortar online of philippines which is cheaper for department stores online do not start a brick and mortar business unless you got a lot of experience with that fajita you never watched them what's the modern investors youtube channel i don't know Thanks for the five dollars, Alice. Thanks for the two bucks, Quinn Jackson. Eric Williams, already two guys going to reach out to. What do you mean they did? Oh, oh, okay. They're already disappearing. That's very interesting. What's up, Douglas Jones? Leslie Hayback. Yep, Erica, that's what I've been. A physicist's wife, a fire chief's wife, a mechanic's wife, and a trucker's wife. If you want to get married, I think y'all need to holler at Leslie because apparently she has the ability to get multiple men to ask for her hand in marriage. Just saying, that's a skill set. That's a skill set because we got a whole bunch of women out here who ain't never been married once. I've been treated differently upon his job. Same man is stupid. Wow. That... Once again, I can't understand that because when I, whenever I go out with really hot women, I get treated much better. So. Sure thing, Valerie. Uh, Mr. Also, no, they're not dead. They're just a lot of hard work. Yeah, it is the time. It's the time and it's the money. Once again, you got to look at what I was doing. I was selling office furniture to business owners and Tricky Ken, as we like to call him, was an excellent businessman. So I learned how to sell from Michael Shanley, the owner of Renacrate, and I learned the business game from Kiki, Tricky Ken. Ken, that, you, he knew business. He knew how to make money. He knew how to keep money. I mean, you know, when I dropped that, he had his wife on payroll paying her $65,000 a year and she was at home with the three kids and he told me he said we just did that well he said I did that because you know if she ever divorces me she can't say that she never had a job <laughs> and a lot of people like $65,000 I mean Ken was making like $10 million a year so $65,000 ain't nothing but I was I put myself in some very good situations Yeah, because the thing is, look, let's say you're a really good father. You're home every day. I, I'm going to tell you uh, up a, a rich father's deal. There's this guy, Jerry Borlazzo. Um, I don't even know if he's still practicing, but he used to work in uh, Cobb General ER. Jerry, went. his undergrad degree was in, the, in con. He was, a, he was an econ major, right? So he took his econ degree. And he started a clinic out here on Fulton Industrial. This little clinic was making about $2.5 million a year in the 80s. So he would work part-time in the emergency room. Jerry was home all of the time. He went to all his kids' baseball games. 
But if he had just stayed a regular doc, that wouldn't have been possible. So it's really how you look at it. Let's see. Heidi Green, I'll pass, hunt, and dodge. Good for me. I did Amazon FBA. Well, part of the thing is, this is how I think about luxury items. If you make the money, you can afford it without it breaking you or causing you financial distress. Now or in the future, do it. Valerie Lamb, I know someone making three million a year selling t-shirts. Uh, I know someone actually Google, well, go to YouTube and look up Christian Guzman, an athlete brand, and look up Max Chewing. Both these guys sell apparel. Uh, Max moved to Texas because Christian said, you can use space in my warehouse. Them Texas boys work together like I have never seen. It was Christian. It was Nikki Blackleather. It was Javon Alvin. There's this new cat. They just come up. Christian is one hell of a dude because a lot of people don't like him because you know he's summer stred and he's got the six pack but this dude is brilliant a lot because i've looked at his his youtube channel's tight his instagram's tight and he's just he's 27 years old man he's 27. We ain't, we ain't going we ain't going there, Yolanda. Oh, one man for thirty three years, so he's gone. Oh, okay, so he's done all of that. That's a good dude. Uh, the modern investor's the top guy on YouTube for crypto. He, I don't care. Let Let me just say something. I don't know if you're a crypto person, but what is the big promise of crypto? You can spend a little lot, little money now and get a bunch of money later. I'm already rich. I don't need to do that. This is why I'm not seduced by crypto. This is why I sold my Bitcoin. And to be honest, I was on Bitcoin before 90% of all these YouTube channels who know this and talk of this and live and breathe Bitcoin. I bought Bitcoin in 2010 and held on to it like a traditional investor. And when that sucker went up, I said, this it ain't going to keep going up. I'm going to sell. So. This is one of the things I get cranky because all of these wet behind the ears. Let's see what happens when they have to do something real like start a business. I mean, most of let's just get blunt with crypto. Most people are not going to get rich with crypto. You may get a little bit ahead. You may hedge your money against inflation. But do you know the people who going to get who who got rich with crypto were the people who bought thousands of dollars of crypto when I bought a few shares. That's who's getting rich. The whales. And probably there's like 500 of them and everyone else. Yeah. You know, like I think most of crypto was owned by literally five or 600 people. Hello. <laughs> I mean, I guarantee you, he don't have more money than I do. That's because I know how to run a real business and see this thing with investors and traders. Most of these crypto people are traders. They're not investors. Investors buy, sit, and hold. I held my Bitcoin seven years, going on seven, seven and a half years. Uh, let's see. Uh, Quentin, I've heard some say in, in previous videos how the Christians will argue with you, argue with your views. We say, oh, that's funny. Very Lamb, what courses can I? Well, first of all, um, you're going to have to be really special to get two or three million dollars in two or three years. The average time it takes for most people is four to seven years to earn that first million. I would say start off with the hustle side pack. And this is why um, the, yeah, the hustler side hustle, the side hustle starter pack. You got to get accustomed to doing business that within itself is a two to three year journey because this is what's going to happen. Your employee mindset 
is going to creep into everything you do. And that's just isn't what it takes to run the business. But for anyone that's interested in courses, everything's below the video. You can buy the main bundle for $3.99 or you can buy one course at a time. It's all there. Christian, the beta males think about being jealous and posing. I got a whole new channel for that stuff. Marriage is a business. Guzman, G-U-S-M-A. Yep. I know the only fitness guys making are those who sell something. I know Max Chewing, Max's brother. Oh, I didn't even know he had a brother. Max makes the weirdest videos, but it works for him. Yeah, Christian's got like 750,000 subscribers and 1.1 million on you on uh, Instagram. Uh, how can I get the help I need without someone stealing my invention? Uh, just put it out, man. Just put it out. Uh, Ricardo, if you don't have any experience, do not get in the food service industry. You will lose your shirt. <laughs> you want to live your best life. What's up, Arden Bolden? Arden, I remember him because Arden's saving like a G a month, has a car paid off, and I think he's like 22. Someone that listened to what I said, listened to the free advice. <laughs> Glad to see you here, man. Eric Williams, blood, sweat, tears, lots of time. There's an article that says the first meeting is the easiest with no kids. Yeah, because, you know, back to someone's point, because my ex was being pretty much unreasonable. I had all kinds of time and I just took advantage because you got to understand when I was in that boarding house situation, I had a lot of time and I was frustrated because I had no money. So if ever I said, if I ever get in a position to make some money, I'm going to go hard as I can because I know what it's like to not. I didn't even have a car for two years in Atlanta. You know how hard dating was without a car in Atlanta. That's where I developed some of my best game. Uh, the five checking account resources is in the basic financial management starter kit. That's links below. I think it's 125. Yeah, because, I mean, first of all, let's, let's talk about don't get in the business to make millions. I'm not saying, you know, if you have a financial goal, fine. Find a business that you're determined to win in or one you enjoy. More than likely, I would like you to get something that you determine. Like somebody say, you can't do this and you all mad. Because it's going to be a long, hard roll. Oh, all right. Arden, I'm 24, no kids, living on my own, stacking consistently and listening to you. All right, he's 24. Anthony Johnson, I'm sitting on my stocks, I consider myself an investor. But once I come across the right real estate deal, I'm pulling out and switching to RE. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about that because that's my plan as well. I'm getting in real estate, but it's not something I want to talk about because most people can't afford it. I mean, I'm going to be my own bank. I'm not going to need any partners and lenders and stuff like that. I will be able to buy properties per year and pay cash. And that's what I'm going to stay in. All right. So let's see. We've been here for about an hour. For anyone that wants to become middle class for real there's a lot of courses below the video pick one if you don't have a lot of money just pick one get started on whatever you can i would recommend the side hustle starter pack is 99 bucks go ahead and get that and if you really want to get everything go ahead and get the whole pack it's like 19 courses it's 399 because you're going to go on a journey you're going to be on a journey. This, this is the first two to three years are going to be weird. I want to, I want you to understand you've been in a position where you go somewhere, you clock in or you show up and at every week or every two weeks, or every month, there's a check, regardless of how hard you work, you could coast and you are still going to get your check. You can't do that in a business. You kill what you eat. You eat what you kill. And if you ain't killing nothing, you're going to starve. Oh, 
All right. Well, with that, I'll see you guys later. I need to go eat.